Hello everyone, this is the solution to homework one. Now in homework one, we had to code a replica of the step function here, uh, which is available in the control system toolbox. And basically we were providing a method to it. And internally we were uh, using midpoint methods, hoin methods, or the fourth order runge kata methods in order to calculate basically the step response of this transfer function via using the differential equation solver methods. So, well, how can we do this? Let's start out here. First of all, when we have the transfer function, we need some uh, data about the transfer function. I'm going to start with the step info because we can use that and we need to use it because I need to come up with a time vector that is sufficiently large to um, basically calculate the whole response. Since that's that, I can ex access the info.settling time in order to get the desired settling time value. We had already the definition, the step was 0.1, so my time vector starts at 0 with h steps and I could write down the settling time, but in order to uh, increase the time, the final time, a little bit, I can maybe increase it by 0.2. So it's a little bit larger. Let's have 10 seconds of settling time. I will have 12 seconds of simulation time. So in order to see a little bit more than that, it's not really that necessary. You can also stick with TS on its own, but I like to extend it a little bit. So. Once we have done that, well, we can use the default method here. So I'm just going to go with the default one. Um, and call the step function because we are allowed to do that. We will compare it to this. Let's call it y default t default. You can pass in the t vector here. You can leave it out whatever you want, it's not really important because we are not going to use the data on its own. We're going to use the plot in order to see because this will never be um, that important if we have the method default, but let's keep it like this. So this is basically the first step. Then we need again still a little bit more data uh, in order to be able to use the midpoint method. So, um, yeah, in the homework explanation, uh, I guess I talked about, yeah, we have this uh, state space representation here. Ax plus bu is x dot and y is equal to cx plus du. Now, the midpoint hoin and runge kota methods are uh, applicable to first order differential equations because the format is given like that you have to have the left hand side uh, dx divided by dt and the right hand side should be a function of uh, the states or the variable the differential equation uh, variable and the input on time actually not even the input but we are going to go with that but uh, with time so we have to have something like um, dx equals f of t comma x because x is our differential equation variable in this case. Most of the time this is basically dy equals f t comma y but since we are basically using the state space representation I uh, skipped that y because uh, the first equation that we are interested in is not the whole thing actually it's just dx equals ax plus u, bu. And we also know that we are interested in b times 1, basically, because the input is the step type inputs, and it is going to be uh, 1 for all time instances. So we have ut equals 1 for t greater than zero. This is basically our definition. So I'm going to skip this whole thing and just call it times b1. 
Now, um, yeah, we first need the state space uh, matrices. So we can use a conversion from TF to just any conversion you like, but I'm going to use the SS state, state space method here and then have the matrices be C D there we go so we have this equation by the way I can also calculate the order of the system here because A will be a square matrix and it will be n by n so I'm just interested in one of the sizes. I can just go ahead and uh, do this, for example, size a, comma one. You can also a use a comma two, but I'll get the size here. So the trick is the following: since we have this uh, dx equals ax bu, uh, and we will use it at different time instances or the upcoming um, states or the previous state, etc. What we can do is we can just go ahead and define a function for this. And dx is going to be basically a function t comma x and it will be a times x plus b times one. So you can first of all see that we don't really have any depending dependence on t. So this drops the dependence on t and in the uh, methods in the midpoint in Hoyn and in Runge Kotta where you have t plus h divided by 2 or something like that, you don't really have to do that because it's always going to be t. And the reason for that is that we have a LTI, linear time invariant system. So transfer functions, gs in um, in our studies most of the time are LTI systems which are not depending on T basically therefore we don't really care about time well we could have actually because you would be the input would be depending on time but that's also not the case because we are looking at the step type inputs so we can just define F the right hand side of DX like this and yeah then we are almost uh, ready to write our code. So first of all, we need some vectors. And keep in mind that we have an nth order transfer function. So we can use any order of transfer function in order to call this method, and it should work. Therefore, we need to use the matrix structures of MATLAB uh, as a convenience in order to get over the fact that we uh, we just don't want to define x1 and x2 and all the state variables like this because it's also not the point of the uh, state space realization because representation because the state space representation is basically a matrix representation. So we have just this x vector which seems to be a scalar but it is actually a vector. So I'm going to just um, define my vector here. It will be a zeros vector here because I'm going to fill it in. But then I need to decide on basically the size of this. Now, usually it would be n by 1. Because a is n by n, I'm multiplying it n by 1. So I will get n by 1. And this is a scalar. This is n by 1. The summation is n by 1. So I'll get, again, the, the derivative of this is n by 1. So it makes sense. But since I'm going to store uh, all the data throughout the time vector, this will be only at time instant, let's say t0 or something else. But I have to stack them into a structure, so I'm going to actually have a, a n by length t here, so that uh, we have, for example, if it's a 2 by 2 system, we will have 1, 1, and then it will be 2, 2, let's say 3, and two, something like that, this. And I know that each column represents uh, each time instance. So this will be zero, this will be h, this will be two times h, three times h, 
etc etc so this is going to be the way that I'm going to store my whole thing here of course I'll also have an output here y and this output will be basically the same size of t because it will be a vector now this is a matrix this is a vector since we are dealing with single input single output systems it makes sense that I will have vector type inputs throughout time and vector type outputs throughout time but internally in the state space representation I have n amount of first order differential equations so it means that I will have a matrix structure so once we have done that um, what we are going to do is the following we have the time vector so let's cycle through the time vector length t we can also maybe start at one then see why we're not doing that so the initial um, values for transfer functions are always picked zero so defining x vector e equals zero y equals zero makes quite sense here at this point and what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically say x old because the uh, notation becomes um, easier at this point so that, that we have a n by one vector so this should be a n by one vector um, so let's get the uh, older rows but uh, let's say i minus one so therefore this should be two because no index can be zero or negative so it should be a positive one so the old state variable I'm treating it like a scalar I'm just indexing it like a vector but I'm treating it like a scalar that's the beauty here let's also have t old t i minus one here and then I'm going to calculate x new in some sort for that I guess I need to little uh, I need to google a little bit I didn't really prepare this one here let's call the midpoint method let's see <coughs> Wikipedia should be enough here, I guess. Yeah, I guess this should be it. Now, here we have the midpoint method. Here we have y dot equals f t y and y t zero is uh, y zero. Here the notation gives us y, but since we are using x dot equals f x, uh, we uh, have basically x in our um, in our code. Now here we also have kind of this correction here this is x old and then we will have h times f and then I'll pass in t plus this and then y plus this and it will update basically my um, state vector and initially I have zero not even y zero I have just zero here so in first step you, uh, during the first step it will just correct it and that's the reason why I just plugged in here x old I just get if i is equal to 2 you can see that it will get the first element here x all the rows first column just get me the first column which is going to be 0 and t old is going to be t1 the first time instant here even though I don't need it I'm just going to carry it along and then what well and then the new one will be x old plus and then h times dx remember that dx is a function now I will have t old plus 0 0.5 times h comma x old plus 0 0.5 times h times dx t old comma x old and let me uh, bring up the um, the, the uh, Wikipedia 
stuff here. So I'm literally just typing it out. X alt is this plus H times. You can also maybe call it F if it suits you. Uh, and then we are passing in to that the time vector T alt plus 0.5 H, which is going to be omitted anyway. So you can just use a T alt, but I'm just typing it out in case where dx really depends on t and x, this should also work, therefore I'm just uh, coding it generally for the general case. And then we have x alt again here, plus 0.5h times again dx and then pass in t alt x alt. So the trick here is basically nothing else than just passing it or converting this state space representation into this function here once you have this function, you should be good to go. You n don't need anything else than this function and, of course, this matrix data here. Once you have done that, you can just go ahead and insert this value into your vector, x, um, the i row. Remember that I have used the i minus 1th column here. I'm going to use the i column here, x new, basically. And you might ask yourself, well, what is x? We uh, actually have y as the output of the transfer function here, because uh, if you look close here, y is the output, u is the input, and we are interested in y here. Well, it's quite easy. This was the dynamic part here. We have calculated the dynamic part of the system. Now we can just use the static equation, which is y um, i equals c times x i uh, plus d times 1. Now I have just calculated the output and that's basically it. So um, since I have now a naming scheme like this, I'm going to do the same here. Now this will be midpoint. Let's call it mid. y mid should be equal to y. In case I need it, x mid should be equal to x and t mid should be equal to t just to be clear. So I've basically saved this now and let's go down before uh, we calculate the Hoyne and Runge Kotta methods. Let's just create the plot that we want to create and see visually if it's working or not. So hold on, grid on and then X label that would be time and then Y label that will be yt and then title step response and what else do we have maybe legend show because we have certain colors <coughs> so as far as i remember t it was t def comma y def it should be black let's increase the line width to two or maybe three and then give it a display name of step or default or whatever I don't really recall it now what was the color for midpoint it was red it is called midpoint so let's do that too it's going to be midpoint the color is going to be red why mid and t mid basically so that should do it i guess of course there's only one flow now that we didn't return anything so maybe we should just uh well we did assign y and t so i'm not going to care about that for the moment let's call main let's see if we have an error or not I'm in the wrong there in the wrong directory now there we go of course I did again have three let's have that So that's way better. Now you can see we have a certain settling time. 
we have the default here. Did I call it default? I called it default, so maybe we should change the name to default. That's more accurate. So we have the... Oh, why did it not show up? Maybe because it's uh, a keyword. Interesting. Well, let's call it step. Uh, it doesn't really matter. We can see that the step response is kind of uh, interesting. And we can basically tune that for one second. Let's have it 0 0.01 and then run it. You can see it matches it directly. So it is solving it and it is correctly solving it when we decrease h. But it is intentionally given that h is 0.1 and I'm going to talk about maybe the pros and cons about that in a minute. So this seems to be working even though this it doesn't seem really that correct at this point it is working. And let me recap. We actually use the transfer function, it's setting time, we have a certain step size and using that setting time we've generated a time vector we call the default method here. We use the um, control system toolbox actually here, but we can, if we are using C or something like that, if we have to use a low level computer uh, programming language, we can skip these parts, we can do that ourselves. Not this part of course, we don't have that, then the default part here, but we can calculate the setting time of a system or in, uh, at least um, predict the settling time here and then come up with a time vector and <coughs> there are also ways to calculate ABCD matrices out of a transfer function but that's not our point now and uh, then we uh, the trick was to define a function here because the method itself relies on functions and I have actually just used the Wikipedia here um, and I've directly coded the stuff that was written down exactly as it is. I've just used a generic function that takes an AX plus B1, the sum of that. And since it is LTI, I didn't even have to bother with the uh, time shifting stuff here. But I also did that in case if you define something time dependent here, maybe a sine wave, for example. You can use uh, this to solve the sinusoidal inputs, for example or ramp type inputs so this should work for that too because I've coded it exactly as it is. Now then I have assigned a, so basically the trick is to come up with this function and this matrix vector stuff here and other than that it's just basic stuff so let me just copy and paste it for the Hoyne method. It seems like it is working at this point. So what is the difference when we are using the Hoyne method. Well, if we look it up again, this was the midpoint method. So let me just look for Hoyne method. Again, maybe Wikipedia uh, or something else. Really not that important. You have everything written in your notes, I assume. But let's see. Is this a good source? Um, yeah, it's a bit ugly, but it is what it is. So this is basically the Hoyne method. You just have this. Uh, you're just summing it differently. You're plugging in a function here. Then there's another function here and then there's another function here it's just changed uh, the way of uh, building this new approximate uh, so it's basically all about that nothing else so I'm going to stick to this structure here basically but in the Hoyne method we have x old plus 0.5 times h times dx and and times so this is a bit complicated here now um, d 
tx t old so I guess this one goes there so it's something like this dx tx plus t old plus h and then x old plus h times dx t old comma x old I guess this is it hope that I didn't mess up so let me correct x old plus 0.5 times h big parentheses plus dx t old x old plus dx t old plus h x old plus h times dx t old x old seems all right now of course we're just changing this nothing else call it hoin and that's it basically and since we're there let's call it hoin What was the color? Probably blue. Yep. Let's have blue. Let's see. Now we have also the Hoin method here. Let's go to Ring a Cutter, which is a, again almost the same, but a little bit more. Uh, it has more steps to it. So here we have X old and T old. Instead of doing stuff like this, we call it. So it's basically deconstructed in some way. So we have K1 equals DX T old comma H old uh, X old. Sorry. And then K2 is basically T DX t old comma a plus 0.5 times h comma x old plus 0.5 times h times k1 and then we repeat it with k2 to calculate k3 if i'm not wrong and then we have K4 DX T old plus H, which is irrelevant in our case, but still X old plus H times K3. Once we've done that, the new one based on the old one is basically the following. It's not complicated like this. It's a more cleaner thing here. K1 divided by 6 plus, K2 divided by 3 plus, K3 divided by 3 plus, K4 divided by 6 times H. And then the new one, the old one, so that's called Runga Kata. R Kata 4. Uh, it should be magenta, I guess. Yep. So M and I guess for now we're almost there. Now we have this magenta um, plot here. Nice. Now the only thing left here is to return the actual thing that we are after and remember that we had this method here. What we have to do is we have to just start an if statement. If you use method equals equals default then you might uh, be in trouble. Instead of doing that we have str compare, string compare and then we have this here. If this is true basically t should be t 
default and y should be y default else if str compare method if it's midpoint we want to return the corresponding ones <coughs> midpoint and then we have point and run a cutter Else, we can also th throw an error here. It's not really Im important, it's optional. Undefined method plus string method, maybe. It's not really that big of a deal. I didn't ask for this, I guess. But we can do it, so yeah. Seems like we are basically there, so. Here we have it, of course, in Y and T, we also have the corresponding, hopefully, um, result here. So, well, it is also obvious which one uh, works better. And yeah, if we increase, of course, the um, step size here, um, where is it? There we go. I mean, if we have a more precise uh, thing, uh, everything is just collapsing on the original uh, step response here. We, we are not going to be even... Uh, we still see the difference here, by the way. No matter what is going on, the black one and the magenta one, which is basically the Runga Kata method, they will be closer to the actual response, which is uh, calculated by the step response. So. And uh, the Hoyne method and midpoint methods are quite close to each other, I guess, since we don't have this time dependence uh, in our system. It could be the reason why we don't see that much of a difference between Hoyne and midpoint. But basically, Runge Kata has a more complicated way of predicting this. Therefore, it works way better. <coughs> so, Runge Kata the fourth order Rangakuta method works better because it has a more complicated complicated um, prediction algorithm so it corrects itself on multiple bases. K1, K2, K3, K4 are all corrected or predicted basically outputs. And it's just ga getting the averaged weight uh, or the weight average basically uh, in order to predict the best it can. The higher the order goes, the better the quality will be because you have just uh, a, let's say, two-step uh, approximation here but we have a four-step approximation here so of course this will be way better it becomes relevant when we have um, lower time steps here because it gives us more accurate results and if we want to for example have a uh, for loop of millions of simulations uh, then this will take less time vector, less resources in order to get uh, a reasonable step response here. And we can maybe, for example, calculate the integral square error or something about this uh, and use a genetic algorithm to, for example, optimize stuff about, st uh, about systems or controllers or whatever. And using the Runger cutter methods inside this uh, would be the better choice instead of midpoint and hoin methods because we can obviously see that it has a better uh, way of calculating it sometimes increasing this uh, i mean decreasing it having a higher precision 
uh, is too much of a workload. Therefore, therefore we don't really like to have higher precision because it will take more simulation time. If you have used Simulink, you would know what I mean by that. So that was about uh, it, I guess. Um, see you in the next videos.